Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTubers. This is Jerry Diamond with How to Get Out of Babylon Flat Earth Homeland. Um, the, I've been recording on the tablet, and it uploads fast. This is great. I mean, I sh all these months of trying to fight with the phone and this and that and the other thing. But anyway, <clears throat> um, and also this has a nice, it has a five-second countdown. It tells you the you're recording with the headset on. I know that, I don't, so I can put the headset on if it says that or not have it on. So anyway, I just want to do a real quick, and this is just a tail end of the uh, other thing, <clears throat> on Vipan's weapons. Okay, da -da, shovel, get one, multiple purpose. I mean serious multiple purpose, you know. Um, these things are phenomenal, piece of work. It's a copy, exact replica of Russian Special Forces Spetsnaz shovels. And these guys can do about anything with these. Okay, um, Good for... Entrenching, digging a hole, foxhole, <clears throat> digging a transfer around a tent, digging a hole for your, you know, poop, um, <clears throat> your dung. And uh, so just, I'm going to recap, and then I'm going to go one other thing. You know, have a backup, something to this. This is a multi-purpose weapon. Like I said, it can be a pick a -roon, a hook a -roon, tomahawk, bark, kindling. Um, you know, if you're kind of, if you're splitting fire with something bigger and you need to chop some strands, good. Knock branches off, take vines down, you know, all kinds of uses, um, self-defense and otherwise. So, <clears throat> and pretty decent. There, there's, there's better ones out there. That one was fairly cheap, and it is a fairly decent one. I kind of like it. Um, Cold Steel makes them, SOG makes them. Uh, there's one out for free, for taking out in the woods somewhere where I dropped it. Don't ever carry them in a loop without a sheath or, you know, attached. You know, that was stupid. And I talked about my, you know... 45, uh, you know, you got spare ammo, always have a couple mags if you can. Watch videos on women, self-defense, there's some good shooters out there, some great people. <coughs> um, Julie, uh, whatever, Julie G, just look up Julie G on YouTube, competition shooter. There's some really, really good, good shooters out there, I mean, phenomenal. Cowboy shooters, oh, don't ever think, you know, if, if somebody had one of these, and somebody had a Colt 45 single action old fashioned where you have to cock the thing before you can shoot it. You can't just pull the trigger. Who's going to win? If the guy knows how to shoot the Colt 45, the old fashioned one, he's going to win. Because <clears throat> he's fast, a whole lot faster than you. Bob Munden, look up. If you don't believe me, look up Bob Munden. He's dead now. M U N D E N. He, can, he could fire and shoot two balloons accurately every time and gun back in a holster, and you couldn't see. The movement. In fact, in slow motion, you could barely hear. You couldn't hear the two shots at all. <laughs> That's all you hear. And gun back in the holster, put it on video. Can't can't even see it or tell the difference. But both balloons blow. And then in slow motion, you still, <laughs> you know, barely hear two different shots. Vietnam vets. This is a Mosin Nagant. This was specially done by a Vietnam vet, a friend of mine. Hi, if you're out there. This gun was in every rifle, was in every sniper rifle in history from World War I on, even before World War I. <clears throat> some it won, some it lost. Carlos Hatchcock won in Vietnam but only because he saw the glint. He fired a split second sooner than the Viet Cong, and the bullet, his bullet, had gone down through the guy's scope, through the guy's brain, which meant that the guy was lined up on him, had him nailed, and only missed by a split second. <coughs> so, <coughs> the, uh, so, this friend, uh, Lied about his age to go to Korea and uh, figured out pretty quick something was wrong. But anyway, last time, and I always felt I might see him again, but, and I think, well, I did see him, I believe, on YouTube. I, as near as I could figure, he's 73 years old, 74 now, and down on the Arizona border, protecting our country. So, yeah, amazing. Um, he one time had a conversation with an FBI guy. And the guy said, you know, he had a sign on his truck, a bumper sticker. The UN is not your friend with a picture of a skull, death skull, <clears throat> skull and bones. <clears throat> and 
the guy says, let me ask you a question of the, you know, of, you know, of you, but of the patriot movement in general, the militia movement in particular, which this guy was part of, and you yourself personally, do you, do you believe that, that that's ever going to happen? And my friend looked him dead in the eyes. I mean, they're like standing nose to nose practically. And he said, let me ask you a question. This guy was brilliant. He said, do you know the difference between someone who's paranoid and a realist? And there he goes, no. And he goes, someone who's paranoid thinks someone is after them. A realist knows the wolf is at the door. I'm a realist. I don't know what you are. And the guy said, oh. He said, well, I just want you to know that I have a trusted group of people in you know, my group and city police and state police, state patrol, and you know, even across the country and around the world. And if that ever happens... I want you to know we'll be standing shoulder to shoulder with you. Ooh, warm fuzzies. And my friend's reply was, well, let me tell you something. He said, I'm doing what I'm doing because I love my country. I'm a patriot. You, sir, however, finger in chest, are doing it. What you're doing, what you're doing for a paycheck. You, sir, are a mercenary. We'll see. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pray for people like that. I mean, uh, he may still be down there. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm just saying that's, you know, I don't, I can't, I can't say it was him, but, you know, <laughs> I had suspicions. All right. Anyway, this is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you are the remnant. And, you know, on, on the whole thing of self defense, you know, it's just, you know, here, here in this region, Healing, food, shelter, water, you know, the provisions of life. That's what's going to be here. And that's going to be our primary concern. And there's not going to be a lot of, you know, I don't believe a lot of fighting. Because nobody here to fight with, primarily. At some point, I mean, Springfield is the biggest, dirtiest, nastiest, and it's not very big. It's only 200,000 people. Not a lot of crooks there. I mean, there, there's, that's the highest concentration of crooks in the Ozark Plateau. Most counties, like I said it before, Cedar County, 15,000 people. I was talking to the deputy one day. I said, you pulled me over. I started a conversation by, how you doing? Fine, how you doing? He was taller than me, so I'll go like this, you know. I said, how you doing? Fine, how you doing? Okay. You pulled me over one night. I didn't give you a ticket, did I? How do you know? I don't give normal people tickets. Do you realize that a 100% of the crime in this county is committed by 100 people. We know who they are. We know where they live. We know what they drive. And we try to convince them that they'd be happier elsewhere. And I'm like, uh, calculator time. 15,000 minus 100 is 14,900 good people who are basically honest. Uh, most of them are believers of some sort or another. Most of them are, def you know, they have beepons. And some of them have... More beef. I just dropped my table because I had the thingy in the rubber band. Um, some people have are very heavily armed, you know, and they're smart. And crooks are by and large, especially when you're meth and your crackhead, are pretty dumb. So, fourteen thousand nine hundred armed smart people against one hundred stupid, not armed people. Hmm. Springfield a little bit different, but still, it could get cleaned up pretty dang quick. And it will. <clears throat> so anyway, <laughs> just some thoughts, deep thoughts. So point being is, you know, there's going to be, there's going to come a time, you know, self-defense is, you know, a viable, justifiable reason, you know, for protecting yourself, you know, your family, your kids, um, you know, you can protect them. So uh, that's about all I'm going to say on that. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's a personal decision in everybody's case, but a shovel and a tomahawk have multiple purpose uses. Use, uses. Uses. They got lots of uses. Okay. So uh, I advise getting them and, you know, and a, a rifle is, you know, good for hunting and a handgun's good for a lot of things, you know. <laughs> anyway. So um, be there or be square. No, drive now. I'm sorry. Drive now or walk later. <laughs> so get here. Help out. And things are happening. I mean, things are, are I, I could go on a few stories, and, and I, I would just be going on and on and on and on and on. But um, I went through with a gal today, a sister, uh, a lot of um, 
the bunny trail, the thousand bunny trail story, and two things came together, you know, that I'd never seen before. So it's, I love recounting things like that, and, and or somebody having a, an, an insight, too, into the whole thing. Um, so things are changing, things are happening. Um, I think come spring, we're going to see major movement this direction from all over the country. So there you go. This is Jerry Diamond. If you're listening to this, you are Remnant Believers. Thank you.